This is Ritesh Srinivasan and in this video, let's look at Retrieval Augmented Generation. So, Retrieval Augmented Generation is a method by which we can improve the responses of a large language model. So, what happens in Retrieval Augmented Generation? So, when a user gives a query, that query is converted to an embedding and this embedding hits a vector database. Okay, what has happened during the development of this retrieval augmented generation system is that you have your raw data sources from which information is extracted, which could be OCR, it could be PDF data extraction, web crawlers, right? So you have different raw data sources, right? From this information, chunking is done and an embedding is created and this embedding is stored in a vector database. Now, when a user query comes using the same embedding, the user query is converted to vectors and in a vector database, using this vector database, it finds out the relevant data, right? Now, this relevant data is passed to a large language model and a response is generated. Now, why do you need to do this? This is to improve the results from large language models because large language models are trained using some data, right? Now that training data may not encompass all the data which you want, the relevant data which you want to generate responses on, right? So another method is with the relevant data, you fine tune your LLMs, but here fine tuning is not required. What you are doing is you are trying to augment this LLM with relevant context so that it can generate a response, right? So a simple RAG application entails many different components and models, okay? So there is this nice blog post from Anyscale, which talks about, you know, how to build RAG based LLM applications for production, right? Uh, so here uh, they talk about the overview Right. I again talk about the utility of LLMs to our specific data source, right? Because LLMs are trained on some information and they fall short when we require them to know information beyond that. Just to reinforce the steps are pass a query to embedding model to semantically represent it as an embedded query vector. Pass the embedded query vector to a vector database. Retrieve the top k relevant context measured by distance between the query embedding and all the embedded chunks in the knowledge base. Pass the query text and retrieved context to the language model, large language model. The large language model will generate a response using the provided content. So these are the steps, right? Uh, now, if you look at this gradient post, this refers to this post, okay, or from any scale. So what are the different components which are required, right? So one of the uh, components is that uh, you also have to evaluate this particular LLM's response, right? So what any scale uh, proposes is that in this particular blog is that we can uh, do a two step approach. Okay. So we can do component wise evaluation. We can evaluate each of the components over here. We can evaluate the vector database how well it retrieves the relevant content. You can evaluate the embedding to find, find out which are the most useful embeddings. You can evaluate the LLMs also to see which LLM is more relevant. Okay. So each of the component can be uh, evaluated in isolation and then you can also do an end to end evaluation. Okay. So you can evaluate which kind of chunking is good for your, uh, you know, uh, drag tasks, right? Every component can be evaluated and there are some metrics such as retrieval score and quality score. Okay. So retrieval score measures the quality of retrieved context by analyzing the distance between query embedding and knowledge basis embedded chunks. Quality score is a comprehensive measure of response overall quality taking into account its relevance, coherence and accuracy. Okay. So there is a retrieval score which talks about mainly this part of how well this retrieval happens. Then there is a quality score which determines the how is the how, uh, how uh, like the quality of the response. Okay. Now if you go uh, deeper, right? Uh, you know what is your data? Okay. 
So you need to actually create this knowledge corpus. If your knowledge corpus is garbage, obviously responses are also going to be garbage, garbage in garbage out. So uh, this curation of raw data sources is also important. And you also need to create a reference data set for evaluation of the system. Right? For the reference data set, it could be a collection of questions on various topics representative of real world queries. Or it could be domain specific questions. Uh, like it depends on your use case, right? And you need to pass each question and its answering sources through the RAG system to generate a uh, response. Right? And you can also have human evaluators to score each generated response for qualities like relevance, accuracy, and factual grounding. In some cases, and majority of the cases in these systems, they make use of GPT-4 as an evaluator, okay, for evaluations of responses. Right? So this talks about your evaluation. Right? Now you can look at each of the components. So for data sources, what kind of data? It could be PDF files, it could be multiple data sources, right? So you have these libraries like Llama Chain, Llama Index, each one of them has various data readers to convert the data into text, basically in an appropriate format, do the chunking, right? And then um, convert it into embedding. Uh, so you can have metadata over here, you can have, uh, you know, knowledge graphs over here, which can enhance uh, RAG applications. So various data sources can be present. The data sources uh, should be comprehensive, informative. Okay. So this depends on your use case again, but the quality of data source determines the quality of responses which are generated over here by the LLM. Okay. Then uh, for chunking again, you know, how much uh, size chunks you need to create. Okay. What is chunking? If you have a large document, it breaks into smaller pieces called chunks and then converts them into embeddings. Now, what is the granularity of these pieces of text? Right. So what they are saying as per this post over here is that what they're saying over here is that uh, chunking significantly influences the quality of the generated content. So they tested various sizes like 100, 300, 500 and 700. What they say is that Larger chunk choices can be beneficial, but benefits taper off after a certain point. So you should not have too much context also. And many open source embedding models can cap at 512 subword token. Okay. Larger chunk sizes can enhance performance, but they can also introduce noise. So you have to experiment with various chunk size to see, you know, what kind of chunks are relevant for your uh, use case. And it is again based on the LLM's context length limitations. Okay. So that is what they are saying over here. And then embedding models. Now, which embedding models are good over here? Right. Uh, so it turns out that simply selecting the top performing uh, embedding model from a leaderboard is al uh, always, isn't always the best decision. So again, which embedding to, uh, you know, make use of is something which you need to experiment and identify which embedding is good for a particular domain uh, to represent the vectors in the domains, uh, uh, to represent the domain in the vector space. Okay. So chunking strategy appears to have a slightly greater impact compared to embedding, but choosing the embedding model is also important, right? Now you can also have data coming from uh, your SQL sources or other data sources as well, not just from embeddings. You could have uh, various other data sources also, right? So, and vector databases can have vector similarity search also term based matching is also available, right? So most vector databases allow you to use hybrid retrieval methods. Okay. So you can have term based uh, search, which is bas based on keywords, it identifies, uh, you know, documents and uh, retrieves documents. You can also vector based search and vector uh, databases have hybrid, you know, they have bore both uh, term based and vector search for more comprehensive retrieval. Okay. Now again, LLM is your choice of LLMs. You know, you can have, uh, uh, different LLMs. You can have mixture of experts where you can have hybrid routing that involves utilizing multiple LLMs. A supervisor model guides the input query to the most apt LLM. You can have intent classifiers, which offers an optimized approach between a naive rag and a cumbersome conversational agent. So this LLM choice is again, dependent on your use case. You can evaluate various LLMs. LLM could be from open AI. LLMs could be from Anthropic. It could be from open source, right? So yeah, 
so at every stage of this particular process you have lot of choices and you can optimize on each stage okay from chunking to your uh, embedding uh, then to your uh, retrieval right every uh, stage or the llm your choice of how you make use of llms so there are various choices at every level and you can experiment with every level to see how you can improve the responses now this blog post is really uh, you know detailed and probably the one stop uh, blog post for me uh, for referring to retrieval augmented generation so i'll be putting this particular uh, blog post in the description of the video uh, this is from any scale do check out another uh, blog post is this right which talks at a slightly higher level compared to this um so this is the gradient flow blog post best practices in retrieval augmented generation and there is one more from uh, stack overflow over here this is stack overflow blog post which also talks about uh, retrieval augmented generation but at a slightly higher level okay where they say that you need an orchestration layer which could be langchain llama index or any of this thing you could have retrieval tools it's basically the same architecture split into these kind of layers where you have llm layer retrieval tools and retrieval tools could be your knowledge bases apis your databases right and here they talk about you know why is uh, retrieval augmentation required okay so this is also a good uh, blog post so i'll be putting all these three links in the description of the video do check out so this was a high level discussion on retrieval augmented generation i hope this video is useful to you If you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video